So here, we're taping now. You guys will be stars. Okay, so slope. Do you guys remember slope all the way back to grade 10? Okay, so now slope is how steep, right? Slope is how steep it is. And the bigger the slope, the steeper it is. Now, realize some people always get this mixed up because they see something like this, and then the next one beside it is like that. And they'll say, well, this one is steeper because it's positive. No, I would say this one is steeper. It doesn't matter about the positive or negative. This one would be a lot steeper than this one. Do you see? So don't ever, con now remember, and we'll do, it's a positive slope when it rises to the right, and it's a negative slope when it falls, right? So this would be a negative slope, and this would be a positive slope. Okay? And just remember, at any time when I'm doing something, uh, just put up your hand, and you know, if you need to ask a question or whatever, um, I specifically have this because I can be looking at you guys at all times. Okay? I never ha I'm never at, I've never had a smart board or blackboard where I'm there. I need to always be looking at you guys because I can tell. I'm pretty good at telling when people uh, aren't getting it. Or if I write something that's wrong, I'll look up and you'll see a lot of people going, what is it doing? Right? You can just tell by looking. So that's kind of why I have this. So I'm always looking at my students. Now, if you remember, slope, and it has the letter M. Does anybody know why M for slope? Why do they use the letter M? I don't know. I don't have the answer. But I know S was taken because that's seconds, right? And speed. So slope's like, I guess I'm taking M. I don't know why. But so what's the, it's always rise over run or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so you've seen all this before. So let's just look at a line. Let's look at this line here. Let's look at AB. Okay, so if we're going to find the slope of AB, this is what we do. We go an M and we put an AB down there. Okay, so it's M-A-B. Now, math can be very confusing because it is so efficient. They try to pack so much. I've just said, in this, this little thing right here, this says find the slope of line A-B. That's what this means right here. And once you know the language, it's not so bad. Now, here I am from A, and I'm going to B. But you can only go up and right. That's it. Or down and right. Okay? So remember, we either go up, right, or down, right. Never go left, okay? We're never going to go left. And up will be a positive slope, and down will be a negative slope. So never left. It's up and down and then right. So here we are, we're at A. And pretend it's like a, a city. And you know how cities you can only walk along the blocks, you can't cut through buildings? This is how the, they call it the bird would fly. A bird could fly to A to B. But with all of these buildings and stuff in the way, I can't. So I'm going to walk. So I have to be able to get there, I need to walk one, two, three blocks up and then one, two, three, four, five, six, six right. So I went three up and six right. So, th and then MAB is rise over run. Now, rise will either be positive or negative, and because I went up, it's going to be which one? positive. So I go up 3 and I will go, my run is right 6. Which is 3 over 6, 1 half. 
my slope is one half. Okay. Now, let's just do a little squiggly line there. Let's do the M of CD. So we're starting at C. We know not to start with D because we're never going to go left. Okay, we're always going right. But we do our up down first all the time. So I would have to go down one, two, three. I go down three, or we could say three down. And then I will go right one, two, three, four. So four right. So because I'm going down, it's going to be, my rise will be negative 3, and I'm going to go right 4, which is negative 3 over 4. And that's your slope. Does that make sense? Now let's do it with points, because this is where sometimes it goes bad. Now here, you always do your x first and then your y. What point is this? What point is a? 1, 8. Okay, so let's put that here. 1, 8. Now what is b? Seven comma eleven. Now, just so you know, and I'm going to be honest with you right from the beginning, um, I made a lot of mistakes when I was a math student, and it was always dumb mistakes. So what I learned is I, I learned I put everything into place, and then I don't get them as many wrong. So that's the way I teach as well. I don't like to skip steps, and I don't like to like, ah, all right, you should know this. Let's go to this, okay? Um, so I'm going to show you everything I needed to do to be able to make sure I didn't get these wrong. Now. I want to label the points. So I'm always going to call the one, the first one, x1, comma, y1. Now I will actually label them because if I do it in my head, I always get it wrong. Even now. You think I've been doing this long enough, I should I'd be able to, but I get it screwed up. Okay? And I'm going to call this one x2, y2. So I'll actually label the point. I know it's a lot faster to not do it, but for me, it's faster to get to the wrong answer, which you have to admit is a waste of time. If I wouldn't have done it all, I'd get the same mark. If I'm worried about speed, why don't I just not do it, get my zero, right? So you see our slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So m, a, b. And now that I've labeled my points, I don't seem to mess this up as much. Do you see what y2 is? It's 11. And then minus 8. And students mess this up a lot. I find once they label it, they don't make mistakes. And then I have over x2. Do you see I'm using x2 first, which is 7 minus x1. And do you see how they're together here? So I really should be able to see it should be 1. And then I get my 11 minus 8 is 3. My 7 minus 1 is 6. And I get 1 half. Same thing I got when I did it, kind of old school, just counting, okay? But we kind of have to know both ways, okay? So one more time. Let's do CD. What is C? What point is C? And remember, X always comes first. 
we mix that up, we will get the wrong slope. 6, 5. And 10? 10, 2. Now remember, on the right, I'm going to call that x1, y1. And this one on the right will be x2, y2. And I really have to be careful here, and I'm talking to myself more than you guys, is I can't screw up an x2 with an x1 or an x1 with a y1. It's so easy. It's so easy to do and get it wrong. So it's y2 minus y1. So y2 is 2 minus y1's 5, or y2, yeah, y1, sorry, it's 5. Then I'm doing my x's which is 10 minus 6. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. 10 minus 6 is 4. And there I am, my negative 3 quarters. So I really want to encourage you, um, because we don't, like, I know what some students, they get it wrong, and they're like, I'm stupid, I don't get this. And I'm like, no, you just, you didn't label your points. If you would have labeled your points, you would have got it right. And it's about that being, you know, putting stuff into place for you to be successful. You know, that's the, that's what we want, right? Now let's just fill in these. Slope is the measure of steepness of a line. That's what slope tells you. Slope is a ratio of vertical change called the rise over horizontal change called the run. And that's why we have rise over run. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, a segment that rises from left to right. So when I'm rising from left to right, it's like that. Would have what kind of slope? A positive slope. Now, a line segment that falls from left to right is my negative slope. Now, this is a good question. A horizontal line would have a slope of what? So horizontal, okay, yeah, so they all get mixed up, but let's draw a horizontal line. Now what is the rise? How much does it rise from here to here? Zero. And the run, I don't know, what, could be like five, could be 20. But anything, divi like zero divided by 20 equals zero. And I want you to think, like this is like the most boring, like if you ever go downhill skiing, this sucks, right? It's pretty boring. It, it has a slope of zero. Now, a vertical line segment, think about it. If you go from here to here, how much is the rise? It's infinite, isn't it? Over, what's the run? Like, we don't even go left to right. It's over zero. And you can never divide by zero. And the way that, and, you know, the way that I remember it is, can you get, I just want to ask, can you get zero out of four on a quiz? Is that possible? What do you get? If you get zero on a four at a quiz, what do you get? Zero, right? Can you get four out of zero on a quiz? But you got four questions, right, on a quiz that had no questions, right? So this should make sense. I mean, it sucks, but it makes sense, right? You can get zero out of four all day long. But four to zero, what? How'd you get four marks? There wasn't even questions on it, right? So that's why when you ever divide by zero, it's undefined. Like, I don't know, how'd you get four to zero? How do you get 20 out of zero? So a vertical line, we would say, has an undefined slope. It is wicked skiing, though, I'll tell you that. And it says the slopes on all line segments, the slope of all line segments on a line are, 
So it's like if I have this slope and say I'm like, okay, I'm going to pick this rise and this run or this rise or this run or this rise or this run, what will you find? They'll all be the same. Right? If you found different slopes, that would be weird. You'd be like, what? Aren't, shouldn't it be the same everywhere? Okay, so these are the questions that I want you to do. 7, 8, and 14. We only have uh, 10 seconds left in the period, so we won't be doing it today. Um, but can you make sure, please, you have your name on your two sheets. I'm going to get those on the way out. I have two piles here. Hope I didn't scare you too bad and you're coming back tomorrow. But I'll just collect those two sheets on the way out, please, and thank you. Don't lose your beautiful green books. Put your names in them. They're pretty uh, hot commodity on the black market. People would like to steal them. Just make two piles here. <laughs> 